Welcome back to Mirror Signal Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Holleran, and today we are joined by Lee Jowett from Knowledgeable Instructor Training. In today's episode, Lee shares his story around qualifying, becoming a driving instructor, and then becoming an instructor trainer and the people that have helped him on his journey. We talk about goals, development, and coaching. Towards the end of the episode, Lee shares some information on their latest product and some video content. Now, if you're watching this as it goes live, you will still have access to some of the discount codes that are available. And he mentions how to do that at the end of the episode. If you're watching this at a later date, you will still have access to all of the products that they offer, but you won't be able to get that discount that is mentioned. If you're enjoying these episodes, please make sure that you subscribe. That way you don't miss any episodes as they go live. You can also leave any thoughts that you've got in the comments and make sure that you give the episode a like. Feel free to share it with anyone that you think might benefit from the content. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can also listen to the audio version on YouTube music. For any further information, head to the Facebook page or group, and they are both at Mirrors Signal Podcast. I hope you enjoy this episode. Joined again by Lee Jowett. Lee has been on previously, and he's kindly come back again. We've got slightly different things to discuss tonight. But Lee, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, Josh. Um, Good to see you, and um, yeah, happy to uh, to come on for the second time. It's it's great to have you, and uh, we can maybe clear any confusion about the uh, business situation as well. <laughs> <laughs> as we can see from some of the backdrop, knowledgeable instructor training. We can get that clear as well, can we? Yeah, we can get that clear, yes. Um, so yeah, um, someone that I know, um, not really, really well, but Good guy, uh, good trainer, Lee Sperry, um, but he's actually not the Lee <laughs> in knowledgeable <laughs> because I am the Lee in knowledgeable. So, um, but yeah, um, I, I've spoke to Mick, he spoke to Lee, and Lee turned him down. So he stuck with me, and uh, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that that is uh, that is life for. Um, the industry at the minute is that I am the Lee in knowledgeably. <laughs> Just don't ask me to spell it and we'll be all yeah. right. And and don't ask Terry Cook about it either because uh, he's just got issues with RSS feeds and what's a podcast, what isn't a podcast and the spelling of knowledgeable instructor training and all kinds of things. So. Yeah, we definitely won't mention Terry Cook from the Instructor Podcast. We can't no. shout that one out. <laughs> no, let's not do that, no. So it, it's good to have you back. I think uh, I think where we might take this tonight is going to be interesting because last time you was on, um, we spoke about the GDE, Goals for mm. Driver Education. And today we're going to be discussing goals for, what, what have we termed it? Goals for developing everything everything yes gde everything. gde goals for developing everything take. yes and where i'd like to start really is with yourself and mm. a little on your journey you've mm. gone from driving instructor to delivering workshops and training up and down the country and just kind of hearing if you had this as a goal early on and if you had to set different goals on your path to get where you're at so that people who are considering doing similar or that are early on in their career have an idea of what things they can do to position themselves if they wish to be training people mm. in in the industry so how long have you been a driving instructor? Um, so I've been a driving instructor for 14 years. 
Um, I came into the industry um, because I always wanted to teach. So that was my motivation. Um, I enjoyed driving, um, wanted to teach, but when you're sort of the age of 13, 14, 15, when you're supposed to know what you want to do and you're an actual child, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Uh, I went into working, I went into customer services, and um, at some point it kind of dawned on me that I would love to teach. Um, I think ideally, even now, I think I would really enjoy being a primary school teacher. Um but I don't think I'd earn the money that I'd need to earn or want to earn um, being a primary school teacher now, but I would enjoy that role. Um, so, yeah, so I came into the industry. Um, I trained to be an instructor. I looked at the training I received. I qualified, and I thought, well, that can't be it. That can't be everything to teaching. You know, just tell people what to do. Tell them what they've done wrong when I'm teaching them to do something they've not done before, can't be everything. Tell them what they did wrong. Tell them what they need to do to fix it. I'm telling them what they need to do to fix it. Can't be everything to teaching. Um, and look, I think I was quite lucky with the timing because I came into the industry around, um, I was training around 2009, 10 qualified around that time um but there was the culmination of all the research that went into um the formation of the standards and the national standards for driver and rider training that was published in 2011 and then the standards check came in in 2014 but all of those things meant that people were prominent people within the industry were sort of looking at coaching and how to bring coaching into the industry. Um, so that was one stroke of luck. Um, another stroke of luck that I had was I went to, um, I decided that I wasn't going to do the part one through a training company. Uh, I wasn't going to use one of the big companies that I was looking at at the time, such as the AA, um, because I thought, well, it's theory, so... You know, if you get study materials, surely you can do that yourself. And um, so that's what I did. And then I went to the theory test center and I got some really good advice from an examiner because he said to me, um, who are you doing your training for for your part two and part three? And I said, well, I don't know, but I'm thinking one of, you know, the AA or the, the, the Bill Plant, Red, etc. Uh, he said, well, who have you done your training for for your part one? And I was like, well, I've done it independently. He said, well, that's what you need to do for the rest of it. I was like, well, I don't know that you can do that. What does that even mean? He said, well, find an independent trainer. You'll get better training. It'll be um, <clears throat> structured to you, tailored to you, um, and it'll work better. So I was quite lucky. I met a local trainer. Um, and he's still probably, other than my business partner, Mick, um, he's still my closest um, sort of confidant in the industry. Um, a shout out to Charles Royal. A really good guy. Really knowledgeable in terms of what he does. Been a trainer for a long time. Um, and he helped me with my part two and part three. Yeah, so um, so I found him, and then I found Claire Wilmot, who owns um, Latix Driver Training, but also um, Jed and Claire Wilmot. So I found Claire Wilmot, and um, with everything I've done in the industry, I've kind of researched it. I was researching um, who to go with, like, qualifying or training with um, the likes of uh, Claire Wilmot and Charles who Charles Royal who I found um, after DVSA and an examiner on the part one advised me to 
sort of look for local training. Um, so I, I was quite lucky. I considered myself quite lucky because I could very easily have gone down a route that many other people have gone down um, in the past. Um, really, how that helped me was that, um, first of all, the training that I got wasn't um, sort of totally rigid and set in stone. And it kind of followed my thought process around um, what teaching looks like, what learning kind of looks like, even going back to, um, you know, to where I was back then. Um, and then I found Claire Wilmot and I researched what she'd done. And I thought, well, this is the person that I need to, um, I need to sort of take advice from. So, um, yeah, did more training with Claire, um, took out a franchise with, um, their driving school. Um, and then, yeah, sort of in combination with that, I was also lucky in that sort of coaching was coming into the industry. So I got into coaching quite early, um, did my first coaching course in 2011, um, and that was with Claire Wilmot and Kathy Higgins. Um, then did a two-day coaching course with Ian Edwards in, um, I think, 2012. Yeah, and then did the BTEC 4 uh, in coaching for driver development in uh, 2013. Um, and then just never stopped from there, really. Um, you know, never stopped wanting to learn more never stopped wanting to develop. Um, I had sort of a role model um, in Claire that, you know, I looked at what she'd done and was just like, if I can do half of that, really. And even now I look and think, like, if I could do half of what she, she's done, um, yeah, phenomenal. So um, consider myself lucky, but I have, you know, I also I recognise the fact that I, um, I was motivated to... Um, not just become a driving instructor, which is nothing wrong with that, by the way, at all. Um, but the reason why I've got sort of where I've got and I do what I do now is that, um, yeah, my, my motivation wasn't to just be a driving instructor. It was um, sort of to uh, learn about teaching and learning and how people learn, um, et cetera. Um, and, yeah, really just to, once I'd sort of seen what Claire had done, it was kind of a challenge to see how far you can get. So um, what can you do? What was your first goal then? Once you'd passed your, was it the old part three, same name, so you pass mm, your yeah. final, final yeah. test, you mm. become a qualified ADI. Mm. What was your next step? What was your next goal? to achieve what you wanted um so when i qualified you know i have to say that um probably the biggest sense of achievement that i've had in this industry is is qualifying becoming an adi you know that's what i wanted to do it's huge it's massive um so that would be um you know that would be a you can't diminish that it's it was huge um and it is huge and i look back on it now i remember you know the moment um and qualifying um at that point i would say um my aim at that point was to develop myself as a standalone driving instructor um but in order to do that you know, that was the big goal. The small goal was to learn as much as I can, develop <clears throat> my skills as much as I could. Um, and if I'm if I'm totally honest, um, I looked at, you know, you look at your local area and the, lo the local instructors and um, it's not difficult to see a massive, you know, gap in the market uh, because I'd already looked at, training and you know this wasn't the be all and end all i've had some training to qualify but what can i do next <clears throat> where do i go next what do i do after that um and so i looked at that and thought 
Well, there's a huge gap because the vast majority of um, local instructors in my area just aren't doing that. So what's my first port of call? What's going to take me the next step forward? Um, there was a coaching course with um, Claire and Kathy Higgins, so Claire Wilmot, Kathy Higgins, um, Diane Hall, um, and Thought Field Therapy, um, absolutely phenomenal. Um, just just um, conferences and workshops. I remember going to a conference that Kathy organised, Kathy Higgins in, in Liverpool. That was quite early on in my career, but I found lots of people there. Um, someone that I know you, that you've spoke to, um, Julia Malkin. Um, so she was there, she was speaking. Um, so there was thought field therapy, there was mindfulness, there was um, NLP. So all kinds of things that I'm now becoming aware of. And I've been in ADI for 12 to 18 months. Um, but it's kind of like I'm, I'm seeing all of these things that I really wanted to see. And um, I do think in some respects as an industry, we're quite fortunate in that there's a lot of facets within the industry that um that are there to help us to develop training on things like mindfulness nlp um thought field therapy you know all of these things coaching um so those people that do want to develop and push themselves uh further yeah you've still got lots and lots of people and places and things that you can go and um and look at for development. I don't think I had a particular goal and plan, but I did always want to learn as much as I could. And I did see a gap in the market. I definitely saw a gap in the market and thought, well, you know, you got the vast majority of instructors and all they're doing is what you were trained to do. And I looked at that and thought, well, that can't be everything, but that's what these people are doing. And so in looking at that, I thought, well, yeah, but there's a huge gap. Go and find out more. And that's what I did. So I'm quite early into my career. And all of these things that you've mentioned, I've come across. Mm. Or a, a few things have come up in the episodes, and I've done a few episodes around different topics that we can go into within the industry. For me at the minute, it's what do I want to do? Where do I want to develop? And there is so much. It's like, I don't know where I'm going to go. don't know what I'm going to do. Mm. So I have kind of set myself a goal. Mm. And that for me at the moment is focusing back on a standards check and developing that. Because as much as everything will indirectly help me mm. for a standards check, that's where my focus is. Then after that, I can pursue the next mm. thing. But setting those goals is something that I'm struggling with a little bit. It's what do I do? When am I going to do it? And I need to just pull the plug now and get it done rather than delaying it. Mm. And I expect there's a lot of people that are in a similar position that are looking for their next step do you set goals for yourself now for what you want to achieve in the next six months 12 months two years how do you utilize that you coach you develop people do you put it into practice yourself yeah so um <laughs> and it's funny because um i don't believe you can constantly and always have a goal, you know, like you have to achieve something. And then when you achieve something, you have to look at what the next thing is. And yes, okay, at times in between goals, you'll you'll be thinking and you'll be coming up with ideas and et cetera, et cetera. And so you won't always have just one goal at a time. But listening to podcasts um, on my way from um, – Birmingham to Reading to Manchester um, wasn't that it changed my goal. The goal um, or one of the goals that we've got 
within knowledgeable instructor training. Um, but it did set me a bit of a refocus um, listening to a couple of the people speaking. Um, and so I've set next year aside um, to go back to CPD because a lot of the development that I've done over the past two years has come around um, writing courses, writing our courses, uh, which is is probably the most effective um, training model that I've found. But it's very difficult to educate yourself in what you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> by writing something yeah mm. so my plan for the next um sort of 12 months is to develop around what i don't know to look at things that i don't know and develop more around what i don't know and then for 12 months after that so i've got a plan for sort of 2024 and then 2025 for where we want to ultimately get to by the end of 2025 um and so, yeah, let's see where that goes. Um, I've not yet not achieved a goal that I've set. Um, and I don't expect to not achieve the goal, but the goal is um, 2025 and the end of 2025. So, um, and I've got a structure. Um, um, yeah, that I've come up with that uh, will help me to get there. So I think goals are really important. Goals are essential. Um, whether if you set a big goal, I think I think that's great. Um, in fact, I think it's probably the best thing to do. But you have to be realistic in how you get there. I know people talk about smart goals, and but you don't have to label it necessarily, but you have to be realistic in how you're going to get there. You need a small plan, small steps. What are you going to do? Um, and then ultimately, you know, you need to set yourself some sort of time limit because um, otherwise, certainly from my point of view, um, yeah, I like to procrastinate quite a lot. So um, I need to set realistic deadlines and uh, and have a plan for how I'm going to get there. But exciting as well. It mo- it's motivating. Um, because I know that I'm going to learn more before I uh, learn more. (laughs) It's crazy, the passion with it and the goals. When you look at what you guys are doing at the moment, it's you've got so much going on, putting out so much content, and we can give a little plug to some of that. Like You've got your magazine Mm. free to anyone that subscribes with so much content that goes out. You've got the workshops you deliver, the in-car training, the Mm -hmm. online training, Mm -hmm. and you've now just released the video Mm -hmm. content as well. Yeah. Was this the goal when Mm. you and Mick started to have all of it? Yes. Um, We've not we've not got where we want to. Um, unsurprisingly, I think um, both myself and you know, um, not sure it might pain me to say it, um, but Mix even probably even more driven than I am. Um, just an extremely driven person. Um, I don't know whether either of us will be happy to just go. Yeah, we've got where we want to. <laughs> you know, there'll always be more. Um, but uh, it's all following the plan that we set. We also realize that you can't do everything at once, Um, and so we've looked at things logically. We started with the workshop um, because we felt that was the thing that would sort of get us on the road. Um, It's the flagship, uh, and I think it will always be. Um, I, um, I don't mind saying... Um, that it, it, it's it's a phenomenal um, workshop in terms of our one day workshops centered around standards checks and part threes go. Um, it's just so much more than being that. Um, 
So that's our flagship course. But then everything else that we've developed on top was all part of the plan. Um, what we're doing now was planned for. Um, and um, where ultimately we want to get to has also been sort of planned for. So we've not finished. We'll keep going. Um, I'm not sure that we'll ever finish, but uh, we, we've got plans for the next uh, two years at least. And, uh, and then let's go from there. It'll be interesting to see where you go, given the amount that you're doing at the moment. I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to seeing what comes next because it's it's a huge amount and i'm getting a lot of benefit from everything that you guys put out i've not yet been on the workshop but i i will be doing soon and there's a lot of people doing a lot of things across the industry but bringing it back to goals we was talking before we came on and i think we'll go there and talk about it because when we're teaching people to drive Mm. i think you've mentioned it that people are happy to just be a driving instructor Mm. and i think yeah that's cool but do you think it's important to be developing as an instructor do you think the standards check pass it away we go do you think we should be looking to develop as instructors (laughs) Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you want my personal opinion then your personal for, opinion yeah for for what that counts for um yes um this is based on so my personal opinion is based on my personal life experiences uh based on my experiences of the training that I received um also you know <laughs> based on um, sort of the fact that um, I am one of two children, um, the other being my sister and probably living in her shadows as a child meant that, you know, I want to come out of the shadows of everything else. So this is just my opinion based on my life experiences. Um, But I also balance that up with the opinion that – I had training to be an instructor and I had a really good trainer in my opinion, you know, um, again, you know, Charles Royal, I'll reference him. Good, really good friends, you know, ultimately probably him and Mick are probably my closest, uh, confidence in the industry, but it doesn't change the fact that in my opinion, ultimately the training that you're given to be a driving instructor is basic. It's basic because it's it's what it needs to be in order to get someone to qualify. There's so much learning that you'll do in your first two years of being a driving instructor that takes you far beyond where you were at the point of qualification. You know, like anything we do in life, um, we can't be, not that anyone maybe ever is an expert at anything, but we can't be certainly knowledgeable at the whole thing when we're needing to learn everything so we need to take little bits of everything and we need to develop that into you know teaching people to do something that they can't do in a moving classroom um and that in itself has many many different challenges so we need to be adept at just doing that and then once we're adept at doing that there's so much there's so much that you can add to that if you're open to it and willing to develop um and my opinion is that in the industry that we're in especially in the times that we're in when we're charging in what is my opinion now starting to get to um figures that are reasonable because i never thought that 20 quid an hour was anything like what we should be charging uh, for the services that we provide but when you look at charging 35 quid an hour and upwards is it enough to just be thinking that telling somebody what to do, backing off a little bit and telling them what they've done wrong and helping them to pass a driving test, which is minimum standards, which is just simply getting them through a test where the examiner just assess their ability to control a vehicle in traffic 
and not make some, you know, not make a mistake that's seriously or dangerously wrong. And that's enough. Um, that's not driving. That's not going to be their driving for the rest of their life. They're not going to drive rationally everywhere. They're going to drive emotionally at times. They're going to be in situations in life that cause them to be stressed, to worry, to panic. They're going to be in situations where they're in areas that they're not familiar with. Um, and so we need to be far more than what we are um, in terms of the basic training that we receive. It's all out there. You know, you just need to be open to it. Um so yeah, that's 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 kind of my opinion on it. <laughs> uh, I can be wrong. I'm open to being wrong, um, but I don't really think that the um, the training we receive overall is is really everything. I think it's a starting point. It's the skills that we need, but it's um, it's not everything for teaching people um, about who they are as a person. Um, and I think the one thing that I would say that because uh, none of that really um, overly um, upsets me, <laughs> for want of a better way of saying it. But what it does is this inference that uh, driving instructors have always been doing client-centered learning. You've not. I have no qualms in saying that any driving instructor listening to this that hasn't done any training around client-centered learning, any trainer that hasn't done any training around client-centered learning, but wants to turn around and say, I've always been doing that. No, you've not. You just don't understand what client-centered learning is. You don't understand coaching. You don't know its purpose. And you don't understand um, the importance of coaching and client-centered learning in our industry. That I've got no qualms with saying because it's something that I hear quite a lot in the industry um, and it's a nonsense. It's a nonsense. It's people shutting themselves off. It's people knowing a lot about what they know and just not enough about what they don't know. Um, and that's absolutely fine as well. But, uh, yeah, no, you're not. You're not doing it. And um, you know what? You need to put yourselves out there. You need to be open to learning and developing and come and see us. Come and see us at Knowledgeable Instructor Training, and we'll help you to understand what you're not doing. A good plug there. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe when you said everyone's not doing it, they stopped listening anyway. So it's just me and you again. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe that's not the best plug, but uh, it's <laughs> it's the case. You know, it is the case that uh, you're not doing something that you don't know how to do without knowing how to do it. Has there been any one thing that has made a difference to you as an instructor since qualifying? Yeah. Um, the the It's not a thing so much. It's people. It's the people that I've met. Um, I've just met some phenomenal people. I've been really, really fortunate. Um, so... Um, I actually did a um, <clears throat> one of the blogs in Kit Mag recently um, was around sort of influential women in the industry because it's largely considered to be a male-dominated industry. But actually the most phenomenal people that I've met in the industry have been females. So there was obviously Claire Wilmot to start with, um, who I found, and Kathy Higgins. Um, but then the likes of Dr. Julia Malkin, MBE, Diane Hall. Um, there's obviously Lou Walsh, who sadly passed away. Um, she's had, um, sadly, because I think she could have had a, an influence on my career, but she's had very little influence because uh, she wasn't someone that I, I came to meet, but she's had a massive impact on the industry, like a huge impact, unbelievably so. Um, and then the one person that if I had to name one person, um, but Sue McCormack, um, who was, um, director at, 
try coaching. Um, yeah, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. To to spend time sort of training with her, I was asked to deliver the BTEC for um, try coaching, BTEC for in coaching for driver development, and just delivering that alone just developed me just hugely. But then also in addition to delivering it, we get training. You know, we get training with Sue. Um, and there's Graham as well, Graham Hooper. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal in terms of his knowledge um, and what you'd gain from him. But even still, I'd still have to point out and say, you know, because there's Claire Wilmot. But Sue McCormack, just, just wow. Just, just stop you in the moment, stand and just go, wow, the insight of the woman, you know, and you just went, when she said something, it just made sense. But before it, you hadn't noticed it. And if you could be, you know, if it could be anything like that. Um, so I would say that would be the one. If I had to pick one thing, just first of all, just women in our industry and how phenomenal they are. Uh, other, other shout outs to people like Sally Kerr, who's just like phenomenal and knowledge and uh, understanding and things like that, just phenomenal. But so many, you know, phenomenal women. Um, but Sue McCormack, yeah, just wow. Well, there we go. If anyone wants to develop Sue McCormack, well, she co authors. Um, Drive, not the driving instructors, practical teaching skills for driving instructors. She co authors that, but uh, far more than that, you know, there'll be so many people that back up what I'm saying in the industry. Um, and, you know, the, the, the products of both her and Graham Hooper, um, you can see, you know, whenever you go to um, conferences now, you'll see, you know, the likes of uh, Ray Seagrave, uh, Kevin Tracy Field, Kev Field. Uh, trainer for tri coaching, me and Mick. Um, yeah, um, Neil Whiteman, um, all kinds of people, just phenomenal, you know. And, um, but yeah, that would be if I had to pick one thing, it would be that thing. So that's uh, interesting listening to it because you could have chose understanding client-centered or you could have chose learning about coaching mm. you could have chose a number of things that have you've either learned or you take people mm. the people that you're naming mm. and i think for people that are listening or watching is find people that are doing good things in an area mm. that you're passionate about or you mm. enjoy and go and work with them, do their courses, you know, whatever they're offering. Because you've just given a list of people that have been influential on mm. you as an instructor, opposed to things or courses, which mm. I found interesting. So for people that want to go and develop and maybe set some goals mm. to develop or do whatever they want to do with their next step in the career. What advice would you give those people? Um, first of all, research um, what it is that you're doing and the people that are delivering it. Make sure that um, you know that that they can back up what they're saying. What have they done? What do they know? Um, and kind of marry up where you want to go. I, again, quite fortunate because my natural sort of skill set, my natural uh, personality traits um, are well suited to a coaching rather than an instructor. If there was no coaching, if all there was was instructing, then I don't think that I would be in a position anywhere like I am now. I'm not a very, very good driving instructor in terms of instructing. That's not my strength, telling people what to do. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in 
um, in the overall power of it. I don't believe that telling people how to behave is effective. So therefore, I won't be very good at that job. <laughs> yeah. mm. um, but I think research, what it is, understand yourself, know what you want to get out of it, and research what it is that you want to do. There's nothing wrong with being a really, really good driving instructor. If that's what you want to be, yeah, don't come and see me. I won't help you to be that. I want you to be a really, really good um, coach. I want you to be really, really good at helping people to um, understand themselves and how that impacts on what they do. I'll help you to create safer drivers, safer than they would be if you don't do that. But what I won't probably help you to do massively is tell people what to do because I don't believe in it. But if that's what you want, go and find someone who's really, really good at it. Go and find someone that's got years of experience at it. Um, but research the people. I think people are really important. We can all get across a message, but it's about um, buying into the person. I, I, I've found that so massively. I've I've been and done some courses, and I won't name people in this, um, but I've been and done some courses where the content's probably been great, but I haven't bought into the person. And so I've not taken as much away from it. Whereas with other people, I've just been like, I've just been wowed by the person. I'm fascinated by what they've delivered. Um, and so, yeah, taken loads and loads from it. So I think if I could give some advice, it would be research, understand what you want, look for what you want. Don't, we had someone come on one of our workshops and they pretty much moaned and bitched the way through the day because we weren't telling them what to say on a standards check. And if you look at the description of what the course is, it literally says in the description, unlike other courses that simply tell you what to say, <laughs> our course does not do that. Yet, they didn't research the course enough to even look on the website, read what the course will do and won't do, and came and bitched and moaned all day and literally made a show of themselves and went downstairs and had a drink in the bar rather than going home halfway through the day. And we had to deal with that. <laughs> research what you're doing. Decide whether it'll be right for you. Decide whether it's what you're looking for. And if you decide that it is, research who's delivering it. And see whether you think what they've done and what they do is right for you. And whether it will interest you and whether they're the right people to be delivering it to you. And if all of that says yes, go and do it. Pay the money. Take the time. Don't worry about driving lessons. They will be there the next week and go and do it and if the answer is no yeah don't turn up don't make a show of yourself <laughs> so that's something that i personally um looking at at the minute is like i've said developing and you mentioned then about driving lessons will be there the following week or the following day whatever time you take off to go and do training and that's been a struggle for me is figuring out how I'm going to do the CPD. Mm. I've got to find the money to pay for the course. Yep. I've got to take the time off. So it's costing me almost double mm. as it does with anyone who does the course. But that's now changed how I manage my business. Mm. And it's given me the confidence to change my business. I can increase my prices slightly. And if people ask why why are you more expensive than everyone else mm. that will i'm going doing this i'm going doing that here's my cpd folder this is what i'm doing these are the areas that i'm working on currently and i'm hoping that people are going to appreciate that or the ones that want to develop you're always going to get the students that want the cheapest person but the ones that are looking for the best instructor in my opinion 
things like that are going to make a difference. Why are you so expensive? Well, I allot X amount of money for this. Now, that's a conversation that happens in my head, and I don't think it would ever come to that. But I can justify it when I am increasing the prices to myself. Morally, I'm Mm -hmm. putting my prices up. People don't have much money at the moment. Why am I putting my prices up? Because I'm going to deliver a better product for my students and they're going to become safer drivers on the road. So it's worth it, my investment and then their investment in me is my opinion on it and my view. And that's how I'm justifying it going forwards. Yeah, um, that's the way I looked at it. Um, Going back to sort of teaching learners, um, I was just transparent with my pupils. I told them what I was doing told them what I was doing and why. Um, I'd come back from courses. I'd, um, I'd bring back little sort of models that we're going to look at and follow. I'd explain to them what we're going to do and how we're going to do it and the benefits to them. Um, you know, I'd be like, oh, I did this course. Oh, yeah, you said you would. Uh, you said you would go in. How did it go? And, yeah, oh, it was brilliant. Really loved it. Uh, I want to try this. Um, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll have a go. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm getting that wrong. Let's and they'd be, you know, they'd be um they'd buy into it because you're learning, they're learning. Um and I think what I tended to um get from 17, 18 year olds was that the friends were learning and they were having experiences, but their experiences were different. You know, oh I've got yeah, oh, I've got a friend and um, they were asking whether you've got any space. Um, the entrance just tells them what to do all the time. Doesn't seem to make sense. Yeah, that's what driving instructors generally do. Really? What you just tell people what to do? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, uh, well, yeah, they, they're really not happy with. Uh, have you got space? And you know, um, and the price really ultimately um, didn't didn't matter as always um of the most expensive i was always busy um my diary was always full um what i found more than anything was yeah so people were learning with me having a different experience and um and then the friends were looking at trying to join and get a similar experience to um to that that the friends were getting um, but as I said earlier, you know, there, there are so many different things that we can learn and and um, and develop that it's um, it does to some extent make me a bit sad that as an industry generally we don't look to develop. Considering the job, it's surprising, but the there doesn't seem to be that much of a push for it. Like we was talking about before we started recording, what a lot of people miss is there's all this talk of coaching and client-centered and should you do this maneuver this way? Should you do this at this roundabout? And there's lots of chats around that. But there never seems to be a mention of, like we're putting 17, 18-year-olds in, what, a ton and a half? two ton of metal that's capable of doing ridiculous speeds. And I I don't know whether it's just me. I don't don't know what the thought is, but this is just my opinion that it's, it's massively important that we get it right. Because I, I dread to think what it'd be like if I got a phone call about a student after they passed the driving test. So for me, that's why I want to develop thinking drivers and give them the best that they can. Mm. And for me, that takes a a lot of development in myself. The amount I'm learning at the moment is unbelievable. But are there any subjects, any areas that you think initially? So take myself, for example, recent, well, not recently, a couple of years ago, past the uh, part three, wanting (laughs) to develop. Mm. Are there any areas that I could focus on or people in my position could go away and work on? Would it be coaching, understanding, client-centered? Would it be 
understanding how and why people learn. There are so many things. And I think from what you said earlier on in the episode, you've been down a lot of these Ooh. areas. Where would you start? That's a great question. Um, I started with coaching. Um, and at the time, if I'm honest, I didn't fully understand why, um, but it was new to the industry. It was, you know, we knew it was coming in. Um, coaching has actually, um, and it might not be the same for everybody, but it's the same for a lot of people that I know that have gone into coaching, that it changes your life. Um, it becomes like who you are. Um, and again, I don't think that's necessarily the case for everybody, but if you're a certain type of person, um, coaching becomes sort of part of uh, of who you are. Um, but I certainly think if we're going to um, develop 17 to 24-year-olds to be safer drivers, it's um, it's an awareness of self that we need more than anything else. We don't need to teach them to be highly skilled drivers because they'll just take more risks. Um, it's not knowledge and skill that they need. It's an understanding of self. So whether that comes from coaching or psychology or these are the areas because there's nobody else to do it. We must be the people to do it since there's nobody before us that's doing it and there's nobody after us. And all that's left is smashing into a tree at 70 mile an hour. And, you know, and then you learn. And uh, that's not what we want. Um, so, yeah, instruction in and of itself. If we were teaching children, then to some extent, teaching a child it works quite well to tell them what they need to do and how they need to do it but as people develop and get older um it doesn't work very well at all it needs to be relevant to them and they need to understand who they are as a person and what driving is to them and what they are to driving and so yeah whether that's um whether you develop that through following some sort of coaching route or whether you look at psychology and driver psychology and an understanding of that and how to address behavior, uh, they're, the, they're the places that we need to go. I've no doubt about that. They seem like fairly broad areas as well. Like I'm massively interested with the psychology side of it, mm. how we learn why we learn mm. the coaching i'd like to learn more about that mm. but i think the challenge sometimes is there's so much where'd you start mm. i think you, you start with an understanding of the, the the job and the industry uh i i look at my first two years of being a driving instructor and um regularly came home from lessons and battered myself like i.e what were you doing what were you thinking what what was that that was terrible etc etc um i think it's really important that as an adi you develop an understanding of the the role the the the, the job itself um just in its most basic form because to me, the most basic form is to be very, very good at driving instructing. So maybe that's your starting point. But then it's the understanding that that's really about developing knowledge and keeping the car safe. And that's really about doing those things in able, to enable sorry, somebody to pass the driving test but it, it isn't what's going to stop them having a collision when they pass so yeah starting point maybe be very very good at being a driving instructor I'm not sure I was ever that good at being a driving instructor never believed in telling people what to do um, or the effectiveness of telling people what to do um, but then 
coaching, driver psychology, um, helping people to be more self-aware, um, helping them to understand what impacts on them and how that impacts on their driving. Um, yeah, they're for me, they're the key uh, areas that as instructors we need to address um, because if we can't do that, then yes, we're going to get people through a driving test, but we're not going to create safer drivers. When you mentioned about your lessons, when you was early on, he's coming mm. back and questioning mm. what you've done. Did you find reflecting helped you with that? Did you reflect after lessons? Do you still do that now to figure out what you develop next? Yeah, I think um, like now it's just a normal, natural part of what I did. Oh, I do. Sorry. Uh, and then going back to when I started, it's um, <laughs> it's probably a normal and natural part of what I did back then, but I didn't realize I was doing it. I was just battering myself. Um, but with the right sort of principles in mind that you needed to be so much better than you were. Um, and I think that I would um, go far enough beyond that to look at, well, but what exactly was it specifically that you feel like you didn't do a good job of and what are you going to do to improve it? But learning is that. Learning is that sort of cycle of concrete experience and then reflection and putting a new plan in place and then going and getting a new concrete um, experience. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I definitely got a concrete experience. Felt like I was banging me head against a brick wall for the first two years of what I was doing. Um, yeah. It is, it is what it is. I think it's a very difficult job. I've took people um, that have been teachers for years and years and years and um, trained them through part one, two, and three. And I don't think they found it any easier than someone that's never been in a teaching uh, role. It's a very difficult job. Teaching people in a moving classroom is extremely difficult. So... Um, I would encourage more instructors to beat themselves up for two years <laughs> <laughs> and reflect on it, and uh, but be kind to yourself. I don't think I was kind enough to myself. Uh, reflect as much on the positives as on the negatives. Um, but whatever motivates you, I think that motivated me. I always wanted to be better. I still want to be better. It still frustrates me that I don't know as much as I want to know and uh, – but I'm going to spend the next 12 months learning more. So I'm excited. Are there any topics that you're going to go and learn about that you're willing to share? Mm, I want to learn more um, about human behavior. So whether that's related really to driving or not, I want to know more about what motivates behavior and also how to impact. Um, because while I know something about it now i think there's just so much more that i need to learn before i take the next step in doing what we want to do next so um yeah, but it's that side of it you know ultimately um our aim with knowledgeable instructor training is that we want to create trainers that can create safer drivers but in order to do that i feel like we need to just know more about um what impacts on behavior, which again, feel like we know about, but want to know more about. And then we want to know about what impacts on what impacts on people's behavior. So, you know, what you can do to impact on um, people's intentions and how to impact or, you know, raise their awareness so that they can impact on, um, on their own behavior. So, um that and then i'm sure there'll be other things that i find in the next 12 months that i want to look at as well uh, but that 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 will be the main the main focus yeah with the behavior and understanding it that's something that i relate back to myself hmm. at 17 18 and i have no idea how someone could have got through to me hmm. 
at that age yes i was indestructible mm. and i i try now with the students and it's i know what i was like so mm. it's going to be a challenge and it'll be interesting to see what comes of it because there has to be a way that people understand the risk of operating a vehicle we're not designed to do it no and and i know the risks that i took at 17 18 so it's a challenge and i expect it's going to be a challenge for a long time mm. but from the sounds of what you're saying is coaching certainly helps understanding coaching so that the students have a better understanding rather than just being told this is what you need to do this is how you do it go and practice it hmm. which even before i became a driving instructor was something i struggled with being um coaching in well coaching teaching instructing in the military hmm. and that was very much this is what you need to do and i didn't get it i went well, and I ended up with people that were struggling. I'm like, I'll mm. take these off to one side and I'll help these understand what's going on rather than keep telling them the same thing over and over again. So it's it's going to be interesting to see where you get to mm. and understanding behavior and then linking that in so that you can help us as instructors mm. raise that awareness because it is a massive risk factor for mm what 17 to 24 year olds in the cars the way they're driving not everyone but they're at a much higher risk than someone my age now i'm too lazy to drive like i used to at 17 <laughs> <laughs> and i'm a driving instructor so i've got a reputation to keep yes yes but it's been fascinating talking to you and hearing your story as well about how you've got from a driving instructor to where you are today and i expect people that are listening and watching are gonna want to develop and try and figure out what that next step is and the main thing that stood out to me from the episode today is the people that you surround yourself mm. with all the way through you've mm. been name dropping all different people that have had an influence on you getting to where you are today so I think if there's any message, it's find people that you aspire to be like and work with people that are like that. It's it's going to be different for every person, but find those people and connect with them, get on the courses. Yeah, be the dumbest be. person in the room. Yeah, be that regularly. Um, I am because... once a week. <laughs> <laughs> but be the dumbest person in the room on a regular basis and uh, your development you'll find yourself more and more the smartest person in the room but you won't learn anything and you'll find a new room yeah then find a new room find a room where you're the dumbest person and you'll learn go back to the old room and you'll be by far the, <laughs> the smartest person in that room but um yeah, you won't learn anything from that. <laughs> it's fascinating. There's so much to learn. And you, you've you mentioned it already, but there are so many niches that we can go into in this industry. And all of them are going to add benefit to what you deliver in the car to your student. Mm. And the thing that I'm learning now is how all of these things help me with my life as well. The more I'm learning, mm. it's not just... I can deliver a better lesson for 90 minutes to two hours. It affects everything that I'm doing, which is interesting because I thought I'm doing all right. I'm like, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm learning and everything's just slowly improving, mm. which is, is good. So it's away from the car. It's everyday life as well. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I've said already, but... Um... Yeah, coaching and finding coaching, um, for me personally, um, had a massive impact on, um, first of all, who I am, but secondly, um, 
sort of my belief system and uh, had a massive impact on um sort of my beliefs in raising my children the proudest moment um that I've had in anything I think that I've ever done um came when my oldest daughter was about 10 or 11 years old and I came to pick her and a friend up. And as I'm driving down the road, they both see me, but they're on the wrong side of the road. So I've pulled up and a friend, my daughter's friend, ran straight across the road. And my daughter ran up the road to a zebra crossing, stopped, made sure it was safe and crossed at the zebra crossing. And I was like, that's my daughter. She didn't just follow what others did. She looked at the situation. She evaluated it. She looked at what she needed to do to do it safely. And she made a choice at that age because we didn't tell her what she needed to do. We didn't teach our children by way of instruction. We, from a very young age, uh, helped them to figure things out for themselves. And, um, and in doing so, you create people that make better choices. So, um, yeah, fascinating. But uh, that for me was like probably the proud. I was just sat there, and my daughter was like, "Oh, shut up, Dad!" <laughs> like, I'm so <laughs> proud. I'm so proud of what you've just done. Um, but that was about me more than about her. Uh, I was proud of what I'd done, really. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, See, I have a similar story, but yeah. quite the opposite. Um, and. Maybe I need to get on a coaching course sooner rather than later. My little boy on his scooter mm. going down the street, not listening to me. Mm. And a car comes around the corner. I'm doing hand hand signals because mm. we're on a video mm. and everyone can see. But a car came around the corner. My little boy shoots out into the road on his scooter. Ooh. And I think the only reason that he got away with it was because the driver saw me running because he wouldn't have seen my little boy because he came out from a parked car and the driver stopped and uh there was no coaching session after that he just lost his scooter for about a month yeah yeah i think that's uh, fair (laughs) yeah it's it's interesting the the effect that you can have where Mm. the friend's doing something and your daughter's decided but i think that's the result of yeah it's not the result of one thing it's the result of everything uh mm-hmm. and i think that's what coaching sort of changed in me it's kind of changed everything um and and as a culmination of that was that you know that choice that uh that she made at that point um because she'd been encouraged to make decisions right and wrong um and and I do I do think I do believe that um, that that's where sort of coaching um, sees its sort of biggest benefits because you're encouraging people to develop internally rather than um, by uh, external factors. You know, pouring the information in, trying to motivate them through um, you know like the carrot and stick approach, um, etc um is that they're internally motivated to make decisions for themselves and see the rewards so um yeah it's fascinating it's interesting but uh yeah we'll uh see as she gets even older it's good to hear and to see the effects that coaching can have everywhere not just on driving lessons and I'd be interested to see where you go with the behavior as well and, and how that links to the coaching and the driving. It's it's going to be interesting to see what comes with it. Are there any other messages that you'd like to share? Do you have anything else coming up um, um, that you'd like to share with people? Well, we have... Um just recently released our uh, video subscription site which anyone who subscribes to kitmag um currently at least uh, can download um the content 
for the huge price of one pound per month, and that will stay the same. By the way, anyone who sort of signs up to it now that uh, that will stay the same and at the same price, like until they unsubscribe. Um, and we we just the plan is with that to just be constantly adding more and more um, content to that. Like that won't stop from the minute that we started to, um, you know, going forward, that won't stop. We'll just be always adding to that. Uh, we've also just released our um, instructor training package, so our PDI package, which is um, a client centered learning package that both PDIs can purchase and ADIs or trainers really can also um, purchase. Um, so for a trainer, there's a one-off fee. You pay the fee and you've got the training materials that you need um, like forever. PDIs is a one-off payment and then they've got the um, the content that they need. Uh, so it's um it's a fully integrated package here that uh is video content work to do in between sessions um a workbook to work through uh lesson plans to put together all of these things in addition to um an online training session with your trainer and a an in car session so um, yeah, there's all of that that's just gone out to the industry in addition to the other things that we're doing. Um, and everything that we're doing will be added to more and more as we go. I love it. When this goes out, I'm not sure the uh, Hit Mag offer will still be there. This will be going out a month from when we're recording now. But I think it I will be do... there till the end of January is... Um, it's what we're thinking. We're going to give two months worth of um, time for people to subscribe at, uh, at the discount rate, and then it's going to go up to its um, its normal and um, yeah, it, well, its normal rate, which will be nine ninety nine after that. So it's a huge discount. If you sign up now, um, then you get that discount ultimately until you decide that you don't want it anymore. Um, and beyond that, it'll be $9.99 a month. Um, we think uh, it may go up at some point, but it won't go up to anyone that subscribes at, uh, at the rate that they subscribe to. It will just go up to new subscribers if it does go up. So what we'll do, we will put the link in the description because this will go out before the end of January mm -hmm. um, for the newsletter so people can then get the relevant links from there mm -hmm. to get it. Because for a pound a month, what have you got to lose? You can't even get a yeah. coffee with that anymore. No, you can't. Now, what could you get? to the beans? You might be able to get a Freddo frog. <laughs> But by the end of twenty twenty four, yeah, you're maybe a not. Frog no, <laughs> no, maybe not. So, yeah, get signed up for a quid. It'll be well worth it. I've just put, um, I've just recorded some content for it in the last couple of days. That well worth, in my opinion, a quid. Um, so yeah, get it, get 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 signed up. Why would you not? You know, forty thousand instructors. We only want a quid off all of you. And we're on forty thousand pound a month, so <laughs> <laughs> and then Liam they could disappear into the sunset. Exactly that. And all we'll do is stay at home recording video content for everybody, and uh, everyone's a winner. There we go. Well, we will get the links in the description, and when this goes out, we'll obviously tag your your socials as well. But if people want more info from you, is it just a website? Is there anywhere anywhere else they can go to? Um, yeah, well, uh, www.adikit. Um, you can email me on lee at adikit.co.uk. Obviously, uh, or at least obvious in my opinion, you can find us on Facebook. I think we're just always on Facebook. Um, you can find us on um Oh, what's that? LinkedIn. That's the other one. <laughs> LinkedIn, you can find us on. 
Um, I'm not sure where else. <laughs> I'm I sure if people else. put your name in, they'll find you. Yeah, somewhere. they'll find us. They'll find us. But Lee, it's been a pleasure talking with you tonight. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries, Josh. Good to see you and um, have a nice Christmas. Thank you very much. And you, all the best.